Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this DCS F-18C Hornet video, we're taking a look at some of the new defensive capabilities of the Hornet. This includes both the semi-automatic and automatic expendable programs, the airborne self-protection jammer, as well as the effects of jamming on your own radar. Let's get started. Alright, so uh, first let's take a look at expendable countermeasures and this includes the addition of both the semi-automatic mode and the automatic mode. Coming down, let's get rid of the uh, stick so we can see the countermeasure panel and we want to make sure that the dispenser switch is in the on position, not bypass and not off. Uh, here on say the left DDI, let's bring up the EW page electronic warfare. And we can see we have a MiG-29 ahead of us as well as an SA-6 and right now we're in standby mode. Uh, hitting the mode switch to bring us to manual mode. We talked about this in an earlier video. Press it again, and now we're in semi-automatic mode. And we're in semi-automatic mode, or SA. Well, what will happen is if we get uh, locked up in tracking mode by an air-to-air -air radar or SAM radar like we are right now, we'll get this uh, DISP for a dispenser, uh, meaning that it automatically selects the correct countermeasure program, and all we have to do is press forward on a countermeasure switch on the throttle to activate that program. You bring it out, so press forward, and you can see it's already starting to uh, dispense shaft out there against that SA-6. Come out of it, let's go to mode. Now we're in auto, and even without having to press the countermeasure switch, it'll automatically uh, start that program. Now, you just have to be careful here because being either semi-automatic or automatic mode, it's a quick way to burn through your countermeasures pretty quickly. So, let's take a look at the next item. Okay, now let's take a look at the uh, ASPJ, or the Airborne Self-Protection Jammer, uh, otherwise known as ECM, or Electronic Countermeasures. And again, we'll come down here to the uh, defensive panel, let's get rid of the stick. And we have the ECM dial here. We have positions for off, which as you might imagine, powers off the ASPJ, a standby, built-in test, and then we have receive and XMED. With receive mode, it will just uh, uh, detect those signals and display lights for us. And we can see ASPJ and receive mode here. Let's go ahead and set it to XMED now, which we also see here now in the DDI. And when it's in XMED mode, if a airborne or surface radar tries to lock it up, the jammer will automatically come online and try to break the lock of that radar system. So we have an SA-6 uh, out here at about our uh, 10, just locked us up. We have XMIT and receive. Jammer comes on automatically, puts the radar into standby mode. Broke the lock, radar returns back to normal operating. Trying to lock us up again, jammer comes on. and breaks the lock. And as you can see, it's actually a pretty interesting dynamic now of what's going to be more important for you of having that jammer on or having a radar that's always transmitting. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, final subject. Now let's take a look at the final element, and that's the effect of uh, ECM jamming on our own radar. So here on the uh, right DDI, we have the radar display. And we have a jamming target up here in the dugout, uh, also called the AOD zone, or uh, angle on track. And the A in the middle indicates that's an AOT uh, track only. A J to the left indicates the jammer, and the F to the right that the FLIR uh, has a line of sight to it. Let's go ahead and make that our LNS, indicated by the star. And one more time, we'll make this an STT, or single target track. And we also, down here at the bottom, we see a radar AOT track. On the FLIR side, because we have a line of sight to it, you can see that the FLIR is tracking it. Now, up on the HUD, we have a range of 99.9 .9 because there's no range data, only an angle data. And we also see the indicator down here on the SA display. So at this point now, we're waiting for our range to close. So the radar gets more valid data back than false data from the ECM jammer. So we can start getting some good range data and lock this guy up. And it should only take a second. Oh, there it goes. So now we've actually burned through that jamming. We have a good track on him now. 
So folks, I very much hope you enjoyed this uh, video on the upcoming defensive systems, and I will see you next time. Thanks.